Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Juno New Origins. We have had the 1.1 update, which added a whole bunch of stuff, including puppeteering and uh, propeller parts and electric motor physics that were overhauled, uh, spherical counterpart to the block part, um, inner craft docking support, uh, dock with docking ports in the same craft and not just between craft. Okay, and then I don't quite understand this. It says expose the RCS manual controls in a designer. Previously placed RCS will need to be replaced or add an input controller to them with the hidden properties. And then there's a whole bunch of user experience stuff. And then aside from the tweaks and bug fixes and all this business, there are other patches to 1.1 already. And I'm not going to go through it all. But uh, my focus for this video is going to be trying to make the shuttle operational and fixing what might need to be fixed about it. And by operational I mean we want to be able to carry some payloads with it. I'm going to see if the telescope will fit. I'm going to accept the telescope mission and we're going to see if that can work with it. But that's a pretty high apoapsis and periapsis. So. So first of all, the curious RCS. I mean, it looks like a normal RCS thruster. It's puffing. It has a manual input. This was what it was exposed, I suppose. It determines if the RCN uses an input controller. Well, I don't want that, really. I, I just wanted to do it automatically, for now. Space telescope. 4.65 tons. Well, that's... Uh, less than the seven tons that we planned for so that part is okay okay well it just so happens i got the bay right i uh or close oh wow i i didn't plan for the i i, I didn't expect to oh, i keep doing that um i didn't expect it to be such a close fit <laughs> so should i have a docking port there or Usually they have their own decouplers. Yeah, telescope is its thing, but it'll want to eject forward, which is probably not where we want it to go. But we'll try to get out of its way at the right time. Stage 3 has 35.3 kilometers per second. Propellant mass 52.1. Which part is stage 3 that has all this? Well, we've got our space telescope. We might have to fix some things, but we might as well launch and find out. Okay, 4.16 million to launch, so we're not going to make a whole lot of money out of this. Okay. Alright, rolling. Our wings aren't going to break off from stress or anything, are they? Well, they could, but not in this situation. So we'll go heads up, I guess. Okay, booster's off. Ooh, hit the wings there. Maybe that isn't good. Uh-oh. Right, I guess we've had this problem before. Okay, let me try and use some RCS. Well, not great. Uh, at least we ought to be sort of stable now. Well, okay, this is not ideal. Okay, let's get rid of that. 1.13 kilometers per second. Well, I don't think so. Okay, well, let's try and make orbit. But I'll just boost straight up to the periapsis. If I can. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna cut it there. 
pretty clear we're not going to get it, but we are going to try to bring the satellite back home. And we're going to test whether this can come back from a high orbit. Really don't want to land in the dark, but that seems to be how things are going right here. And I'm not going to try to land anywhere in particular as long as we get to the ground, hopefully. Just going to aim for zero there, more or less. Okay, well... As the world turns, you'll see what happens. I need to fix the fact that this is functionally upside down. That's what I needed to do. Well, once again, there's that flag, Hippolyta Ground Station. But I think we're gonna overshoot that. Oh, oh, um... Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no! Uh-oh. Our balance is not good. Do we have... We don't have any stuff in the tail. It must be... The satellite is just badly balanced. But then I had the seven ton payload in the back there. Ooh, this is not good. Hmm. That's weird. Because the satellite, its center of mass should be further forward, if anything. But it seemed like the center of mass was too far back. But. That shouldn't be the case. Well, we're gonna retry, but we're gonna save flight. I mean, I don't know. We get another satellite, right? <laughs> so, we're gonna launch another one, but that's a little bit peculiar. Yeah, we had mounted the seven ton payload in the back of the bay. And we had no fuel left, basically. So the center mass should be pretty far forward at that point. Okay, yeah, let me adjust pilot orientation here. Looks like we can do that. I think I'm going to increase the size and duration of our boosters. It's a little bit hard to figure out what I've got though, because the stages are all confused. I'm gonna add a little bit of dead weight in the nose. I don't like doing that, but just in case. Okay, let us try this again. Okay, go. Okay, that's good. That's very good, in fact. Well, good to have a nice start. We'll see how it goes, though. Yep, pretty good up till around here. Uh, of course, the critical thing is when the boosters come off. Let me get the RCS on. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Booster set. Okay. Don't don't go over there. Try to stay stable, please. Okay. Oh. Uh, I'm pulling up a lot and stuff. I moved the engines a little bit. Might. I mean, it was good for the launch part, but it's a little bit iffy right now. Um, the stability system definitely does not want to stay stable. It doesn't use enough of the pitch to do that. I can manually do it though. If I let go of the stick, it won't hold, though. 
seeing if we can hold it without the RCS since consuming the RCS isn't great. We have maneuvers to do. But even though I have two engines there, it doesn't seem to do roll very well. Uh, they, they don't seem to be doing roll at all. I might have to check their actuation to make sure they're told that they can do roll. In theory, they should be able to. But yeah, they're not controlling roll right now. Now are our tanks. Okay, we just need to keep an eye on the nose cone tanks for when we need to dispose of it. We can actually keep burning until... There's nothing left in it. I can try and make sure that the periapsis remains negative. This time I reduced the priority of the tail tank so that we've got all of that still. Okay, that'll be good for disposal. So we did that reasonably efficiently. Well, better than last time anyway. So, off it goes. And then we've got two kilometers per second now. The tail tank is all there, as is this tank, so we're fully fueled internally. Okay, burning with our OMS engines. And we'll go for that periapsis again. Okay, well, uh, within one kilometer of that periapsis, so good, let's proceed. There's our planet. I don't know if it can come back down though. <laughs> we'll see, we've got 784 meters per second left. Okay, ignition. Uh, well, yeah, I don't think it's coming back down. We'll see the Delta V after we release the payload, but it's looking unlikely. Uh, I think we'll have just enough to get to the target orbit here. It's a pretty high orbit, though. Way higher than the Hubble Space Telescope is placed. Okay, well, it's happy with that. Alright, detached, uh, whoops. Detached uh, telescope. I can't see anything. Okay, there it is. Okay, slow down. And... Oh, oh, oh. No! Okay, well, two parts have exploded. <laughs> but we got paid. I don't know which parts got exploded, but hopefully it's on the space telescope. <laughs> okay, but um, we might have a bit of a... Orientation problem? Time warp can always help. Okay, but we have only 130 meters per second. We'll see where that gets us, actually. Let's go to the apoapsis. So, a little bit too tight in the cargo. I didn't expect it to extend pistons. I think they were expecting that I would deploy the space telescope on top of a rocket. But why would you do that? When you know that the most famous space telescope deployment occurred in a shuttle. I don't know. And... That's it. You know, technically... Well, I don't think it would have been possible, but... Maybe we could have boosted up to the moon and have the moon slingshot us back down, but no, I don't think we had enough for even that. Um, yeah, so we're in this orbit here. The space telescope probably just got exploded, but... Yes. I mean, in theory, it's a space telescope capable shuttle, but this was a heck of an orbit to send us to, and it is now stranded. So, well, anyway, end flight. Um, take flight. I don't know. Maybe we can send some fuel up to it. I don't know if we have something like a claw or something, and because uh, we don't have any docking port in there right now. So we did that. We have 95 tech points. Is there something we can do with that? Direct feedback. Pushing air. Well, there's the uh, propeller stuff. Well, more propeller stuff. Lights. We could probably have done with some lights. 
Oh, I forgot about the heat shield coating. We should probably add some to the shuttle. That might have helped. Well, I mean, if we actually get it back on some mission. So I don't know about whether we want heat shield coating, um, the lights, or the rover parts right now. So given our apparent problems with re-entry with this, I think I would like to flight test it again. And we do have an interesting pilot license contract. I probably should have a pilot license by now, uh, but it is requiring us to take off from the village runway. But we're supposed to get to Mach 1, which this should be able to do. And it doesn't pay much, so, but we're trying to recover it and we won't have the boosters and the external tank and everything. Uh, and then we have to slow down under 10 meters per second before entering the parking area. Um, th th this bit with the bottom of the ramp and the parking area seems a bit complicated. But again, I should have a pilot's license, so and we'll unlock a new location. So, um, let's just take that off. Configuration plane. Uh, well, see, now with plane, it's upside down. <laughs> um, let's take a look at the center mass and center of lift and everything. Well, if anything, it should nose down, but it nosed up. It'd be nice to have cockpit windows and everything, too. Um, I don't want a fighter jet cockpit. I don't suppose there are other cockpit designs built into this. No, it doesn't seem to be. Maybe we should just straighten up the main engines. For this purpose. 75 seconds like that, but we've got lots of thrust to weight ratio, so that's not going to be how it works exactly. Um, but we're not going to use the pixie, actually. Just wanted to get a sense. Okay. I'm not going to have any mop propellant in the nose, so we'll just be like this, and I'm going to save this as a flight test. Okay, well, it's a little bit dangerous. Obviously, jet engines would be safer, but this saves me from trying to figure out a jet engine configuration with the same mass in the tail. So... And then we have to get air intakes and all that business. So we will see. Yeah, the other mob propellant is back here. And dump that too. Well, I guess we have to use the village runway. Right? I mean, that was implied. Well, yeah. Well, at least it's a low launch. Well, no, we can't possibly launch this. Oh, yeah. So what do we do then? I mean, I guess we... I'll flight test this first and then do that contract. Let's just do a flight test today, because we'll need a smaller plane for that one. Well, a little bit dark out, but okay. In the village, I mean, see? Anyway. Okay, we're off the ground. Okay, I need lights. Well, we'll get to Mach 1, but I can't see the runway anymore. Okay, well, so I can't do that. But I can recover from that. Because it has overwhelming power. So, like... I could fly this, if I put jet engines on this, I could like fly 800 kilometers. It didn't say anything about taking off from the village runway. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well I'm gonna abandon this one. No, I'll just build something small to take care of that, hopefully. So basically, if we had Two outboard stabilizers. Still a little bit too tall right now, but those are a little bit big anyway. I don't think I'm gonna get this under four meters. But we can, like, make a scale version of the original. Well, I've made mincemeat of the original thing. 
We're just gonna go with jet engines. We'll see about these druids. Centaur engine. Well, seems a bit small, doesn't it? I'm somehow making the jet version of the Beechcraft Starship or something. Well, there's a Minotaur engine as well. Hmm. But I don't think it's suited for... Mach 1. Yeah, let's just go with the oldest and most inefficient of jet engines. make it huge. <laughs> that looks like I'm gonna scrape the thing off the tail, doesn't it? We probably, uh, don't need 32 minutes of burn time. We'll, we'll tuck that into the body, and we'll just not fuel this very much. Okay, well, that looks better anyway. But the... Pilot is sort of tucked into something with a lot of fuel in, so let's just reduce that, increase this a little bit. 14 minutes with a 2.22 thrust to weight ratio. The stuff that dreams are made of. Well, if we can rotate without killing ourselves, this should be good. Okay, so that's at 35%. That's at 70%. So, well... We'll figure that out later. Uh, well, I mean, actually, we could put the fuel in this tank instead. Could underfuel that one to give way to the jet engine, and then this could have the fuel. Uh, uh, we'll call this the Druidcraft Starship. I guess. Close enough. Alright, well, now this is dangerous. Oh, I guess we should put a druid in? Can we do that? Yeah. Um, doesn't seem like a good idea at all, but... Okay, <laughs> activating engine. Uh, we let, let's be careful as we go across this lip here. Eat this lip. Can't they make this? Uh, can't they make this smooth here? All right. Okay, um, gear up. I don't know if we have enough stopping distance though. It's a little bit nose heavy right now. Let's get the stability assist, I guess. I don't know if I want the stability assist actually. Okay, well we've passed Mach 1. But landing it. <laughs> We are definitely going too fast for this. Air brakes. I always need air brakes. Uh, we'll buzz the uh, village. Oh, now it's not targeting the vill- uh, the... I shouldn't have gotten that close. It's no longer targeting what I wanted to target. Cruising along with 9% power here. But we're still going way too fast. It's a little bit nose heavy. Well, I guess I don't have to hit this part, but I can't hit anything. This thing is not going to be able to stop in time. Uh. Uh, <laughs> oh, one part has been disconnected and it's the only part that can power us.
Wait, uh, I don't suppose I've got, like, motors on the landing gear, do I? <laughs> I need motors on the landing gear. This might be a little bit too big to do this at the Village Runway. EVA. Sally, right? Stop, uh, stop naming them after real people, though. <laughs> it should be, like, Drudman. Or, uh, Drud Drudster. Something Drudster. It's gonna get... But where's the engine? <laughs> oh, there's the engine. Yeah. Our Drude here cannot pick up that engine. Let's see. Oh, really? That that slope is too much? Eek. 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 Shift does not do what I think it does. Shift, uh... Is running, walking, that's control doing that. Shift does not seem to do what I expect it to do. Uh... Yeah, we're not gonna make it over there. So is jetpack on. Well, I mean, if I get to the village runway top with our druid, does it count? Our druid can't go past 10 meters per second. It counted! I am a successful pilot. Okay, I don't know if that's what they meant for us to do with the druids, but uh, here we are. Okay, so druid EVAs. Very useful as it turns out. I think I'll leave it there. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.